Hey, Rock of Roseville family. What an honor to be with you on Mother's Day. I'm always honored to be with my home church and uh, I just bless all you moms out there. I know that keeping track of your family in these days has been uh, just a lot. It's a lot of cooking. It's a lot of shopping. It's a lot of logistics. And uh, I, I, I have not cooked this much in uh, three years. And I'm cooking so much that I'm actually waking my family up to make sure that they eat what I just cooked, even though that's dinner and they want to eat breakfast. I just want people to eat because I'm home. And a friend of mine texted me from uh, the Midwest and said, you know, I think the average amount of weight people are gaining is around 19 pounds. And I said, no, no, it's not. We all have to get out there and exercise like crazy. So let me pray for the word of God this morning that you are greatly encouraged uh, in this time of uncertainty. We are certain of who's in control. And that is our Lord God, our Savior Jesus. So Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, uh, Lord, I thank you for the freedom in the United States of America to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that across this uh, globe right now, people are tuning in to hear uh, the words of hope and the words of life. Jesus, you said you are the way, the truth, and the life, and we declare that again today, that, the, that your word never returns void. So this morning, Father, I just pray that each and every person who is tuned into this broadcast would be lifted up and again renewed in their faith that you have all the strategies, all the plans, not only to heal our world of COVID-19, but to remove and heal us of every obstacle in our hearts and in our thinking that reduce you to anything less than the greatest God, the greatest friend, and the most incredible force of healing love that we would ever know. So I bless you, Lord. I thank you for this day. And I ask that you would anoint this word for your people this morning in Jesus' name. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about being the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, and we are his reflections of glory. That's what the Word of God says. And I want to talk to you about how we are those reflections of glory this morning and how we are embedded in his love. But I want to share with you, first, to, first of all, that I had this amazing dream not too long ago. And I was on a beach with Jesus, and it was night outside, and the only thing that was shining on this crescent-shaped beach, which was beautiful, was uh, the full moon. It was incredible. This light was shining down, and Jesus was standing there, and, and if you've ever had these moments of encounter with the Holy Spirit, where the Lord is visible to you, then you know the peace that overwhelms you and the love that infiltrates you, mind, body, and soul. There's nothing like those experiences. And as I'm standing there with Jesus, he opens up his hands. He's got his hands like this and he opens up his hands. And in his hands out fly thousands and thousands and thousands of fireflies. And I am just standing there in the dream looking at him and looking at these fireflies as they light up the entire atmosphere. They light the water, they light the beach, they light everything. And I was so blown away that it took my breath away. As they were moving around in all directions, it, it was the greatest fireworks display I'd ever seen. And then I heard Jesus say these words, my beloved ones are like fireflies. When you gather together, there's a beautiful display of my glory, much like this. The more of you who are assembled, the more irresistible the light display. Others are drawn into my light through you. And I was led to Psalm 36, 9 through 10 when I woke up from this thing. To know you, Lord, is to experience a flowing fountain, drinking in your life, springing up to satisfy. In your light, we receive the light of revelation. Lord, keep pouring out your unfailing love on those who are near to you. Release more of your blessings to those who are loyal to you. In the light of the Lord Jesus, as we respond in surrender and in obedience, we receive revelation, strategies, invitation from the Lord to come up higher with him. His light is his love, and his revelation is actually the truth of what is happening all around us and in us through his presence, through his Holy Spirit presence. It's never according to what our natural eyes can see, but what is the truth according to the word of God and the power of his spirit. There is a rhema word for our time, and right now we are in a season of being prepped. I was in awe with this firefly vision and this dream that I had with Jesus, and in the moment I thought of something else, and I said, Lord, when these fireflies aren't lit, 
they're not very appealing to look at. If you've ever been in the South or you've been in the East Coast where fireflies are prevalent, when they are not lit, they are not very, uh, they're kind of creepy looking. And when I said that, the Lord laughed at me and he hugged me and that was when I woke up. And then I kept thinking about that when I woke, about how when we are not infused with the righteousness of Christ, we're not aware of his presence, we're ignoring him, we're worried about whatever thing we're fearful about, we're not reflecting this great glorious light he's given us, then we're not very attractive either. Um, here's a couple more fun facts about fireflies you might, you might find fascinating. The only time that these bugs, these insects, can light is when oxygen is present. So when there is no oxygen, they can't light, and that is true of us. We are given the very breath of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew. That's our light, that's our breath, that's our living, living entity of the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God is the lamp to our feet that marks our path to destiny. 2 Timothy 3.16 is incredibly important for us in this season. Here's the Passion Version. Every scripture has been inspired by the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, and it will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. We need desperately the breath and illuminating light of God to give us strength and wisdom for this journey. It's lasting much longer than most of us ever envisioned. And the last months of dealing with this pandemic of coronavirus and the limitations that are imposed into most of our lives and families, there have been for some, you know, if you're just being honest, a dimming of our faith light. Some of them are like, oh my gosh, God, how much longer? Some of our prayers are, can we just get back to normal? Uh, I believe that there is not going to be a return to what was, but there is going to be an invitation to what is. And it will be an amazing, amazing opportunity for us to join the Holy Spirit in every way. Do you know that some extroverted friends of mine are in such need of FaceTime with people, they are just withering on the vine, while introverts who are desiring their homes to themselves are challenged to love households full of people 24-7. Even the dogs and the cats are looking for a vaccine, wishing we would all go back to work. And I laugh at my neighbor's dog. Every time I come outside, my neighbor's dog is running somewhere to avoid any more people that will want to walk him. He doesn't want to do three walks a day. He's used to sleeping all day while the kids go to school and the parents work. And they're both, oh, everyone's home. The kids are sitting outside with the dog and they've walked him. The mom walked him, the dad walked him. Then I come out and the dog's like, oh, and runs under the car. So God has called us into this new season, but don't miss this. He called us into a season of refuge. He's not calling us into a season of, of starkness. Uh, he's calling us into a safe harbor. Let down the sails of all of the striving and all the things that we've been doing. This is in order to prepare us, everybody, for what's coming. Though there's a storm raging all around us, nobody has an answer for this or that, and every state is in a different uh, level of what they're opening and what they're not. Jesus himself calmed the wind and the waves and he gives us respite. Remember, he was asleep in the boat when that was happening. He gives us respite in the middle of the chaos. Today, I want to remind you, beloved of God, that you and I have an invitation to allow the Holy Spirit to refocus our attention and refocus our affection on the one who holds the universe in his hands. John 4, 34 and 35 has been a highlight to me this week. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white with harvest. For the first time in my life, I see people all around the world via technology whose hearts are open. And maybe for the first time their hearts are so open to hear about the love of God for them. But if you're like me, you've been shut in for a while now, you might need just a little bit of help gaining some clarity or some boldness to embrace God's perspective and understand how each of us, no matter what your position in life, how each of us fits into the chapter of God's great story for this time. 
Jesus said something that is transformational, and every time I read it, it, it undoes me. John 15, 15 and 16, I have never called you servants because a master does not confide in his servants, and servants don't always understand what the master's doing. I call you my most intimate friends, for I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. You didn't choose me chosen and I've commissioned you to go into the world and bear fruit. Jesus calls you and me his most intimate friends. I love that passage. The Greek translation of that phrase is those I have cared for from the womb. Do you know that no matter what your conception or your birth circumstances, Jesus cared for you from the womb. We are born of him, in him, and through him. We cannot be separated from him. And the word to remember is embedded. We are embedded into the Lord Jesus, and he is embedded in us. Embedded has some really interesting meanings that apply to our current needs in the middle of this pandemic. Embedded means to fix an object deeply and firmly into a surrounding mass. When I've made God too small, and we're all guilty of that, aren't we? You know, sometimes things are just feeling like they're insurmountable in our world. I, when those things happen to me, I go to the NASA sites and I look at the galaxies. Because whenever I do that, I'm always stunned and amazed at how small I just made God. Currently, we know less than 10% of the galaxies. Can you imagine? 10% of the galaxies, and there's 100,000 galaxies in, in about a pinhole size. That's how big Yahweh is, creator God. So I don't know where you are in the middle of this, but maybe you need to allow God to reveal himself as, as huge, enormous, creator of all time. Embedded also means to implant something like an idea into something else until it becomes an essential characteristic of it. Remember what Jesus said? You can't be separated from him. His idea, God's idea from the beginning is that we would be one forever, he and us and us in him. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says this, and I am convinced that nothing could ever separate us from God's love, neither death, nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just amazing. The last meaning of embedded is to attach to a military unit during a conflict. We are in a war, everybody. We're in a war right now against fear. Remember Elisha and his servant in 2 Kings 6, 15 through 17? It says this, when the servant of the man, meaning the servant of Elisha, got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Don't you need to hear that today? Elisha prayed then, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Though we may not detect it in the natural, we are currently surrounded by heavenly hosts protecting us and guarding our lives. Lord, open our eyes to see, pressing into your spirit realm and into your word so that we understand that we're part of your army, not rendered powerless, but advancing and taking things by force. We are much more powerful than we realize for it's Christ's power and authority embedded in us that moves the mountains in front of us. No matter what you and I feel like, feelings are not an indication of truth. Only the word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit is truth. Jesus told uh, Peter in Luke 5.10 not to yield to his fear. I have to be reminded of that every day. 
If you're watching the news, it's controlled by fear. It's a spirit that's come upon this planet. We have to focus on what Jesus said. Jesus said to Peter, hey, dude, get with the program. I commissioned you to catch men for salvation. That's where you need to adjust your thinking. It is the same with us. What's the reason we're all here? What's God's story? It's for mankind to take dominion over the earth and bring forth the good news of Jesus across the world so every place is filled with this glorious light. That's the whole point. I cannot forget, and you can't either. This is God's story. God's the one revealing the times and the season, and we never can perceive what he's doing if our hearts aren't aligned with faith. Faith is a force but it's only propelled by the new revelation of who Jesus is on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Fear snuffs out revelation, and revelation is light. Remember those fireflies? Fear is darkness, and the light will cover the darkness if there's enough of it there. Ephesians 8, 8 through 13 says, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and all that is right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Verse 11 says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it's shameful even to speak of the things they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible for anything that becomes visible is light. We, you and I, the daughters and sons of God, have been given this great privilege of being his mirror image, his reflection, his light, and to attract others to him as the peacemakers, the reconcilers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. That's those who reconcile the lost to Jesus so that they can make their way home to the Father. It all is summed up so brilliantly in the message version of Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm gonna hide you under a bucket, do you? I love this. I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine, 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 shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. And if that wasn't like the perfect scripture, how about the passion translation of the same scripture? Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says this, your lives light up the world. Let others see your light from a distance. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? Who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it is placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that the commendable things you do will shine as light upon them and they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. You know that firefly dream that I had? I really believe that is all about Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Can you just picture all of the believers standing together, just even in the area where you are, standing together, worshiping and praying, and in the mighty love light of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, the supernatural breath of his spirit grows brighter and brighter and brighter, illuminating our marriages and our families, our neighborhoods, our businesses and cities, and our states and nations. The light is so irresistible when we're in unity with the Holy Spirit. It captivates other people to come into his presence. The light of Christ is spread so much farther when we walk together in unity, generosity, honor, love, compassion, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, peace, joy, and self-control. And you know, as long as we remain in this shelter in place or lockdown or whatever you call it, I'm sure you wonder how we're all going to bring this increase of collective light and love because we can't even gather with more than six people. 
Facebook Live, Zoom platforms, Instagram, every kind of social media platform is a huge help. But I want to share one more aspect of Love Light that may be new to you or maybe you're just not putting a precedent on it in this time. In the last several weeks, I kept hearing a word from the Lord and the word was hot shot. It's not a word that I use, so I had to look it up. A hot shot is an important or an exceptionally able person. It's a person who displays high level skills with flair. I kind of like that. The Lord said that those who follow him are hot shots, important and exceptionally able, but he's looking for all of us to pull together corporately. And when we do that, hot shot has a whole another meaning. A hot shot crew is an elite hand crew of firefighters. They are highly trained, you gotta love this, highly trained, skilled, and proven with tactical leadership expertise to bring an initial attack or an extended attack on wildfires. What do we need an attack on everybody? We need an attack on fear. We need to annihilate fear with the love light of Jesus Christ. These hotshot crews respond to the most high priority fires posing the greatest threats. What's the greatest threat right now? It's fear. Fear that we're going to have this, another surge of it, this, that, the other thing. It's just constant. These hotshot crews work in the most remote regions for an extended period of time in impossible challenges with little logistical support. Don't you feel like that stuck in your house? Feel like, where's my support? I, you are highly trained for war, highly gifted, exceptional, skilled. Your prayers matter. Last point. These places where there's been such an outbreak of COVID-19 are actually called hot spots. Do you know that when we band together in prayer and praise, we become a hot shot crew called to bring an end to the hot spots? Through prayers and intercession, through praying the word of God aloud, we are releasing the kingdom over these places of fear and people are being healed. This pandemic wildfire of fear we're living in can only be extinguished by the powerful healing presence of the Lord that comes on the answer of our collective prayers and worship. We had a friend of ours released from ICU because worldwide people started to pray. In ICU, fighting for their lives, this person was released from the hospital 30 hours later after prayer. Now I know that that's not the case for some, but I wanna tell you that the Lord says we have to have confidence in him. First John 5, 14 through 15 says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. The more we surrender, the more time we spend with him, the more we know him, the more we pray according to his will, because that's how relationship works. Just a few days ago, I had a woman write to me, and she said about four months ago in one of our gatherings uh, outside of the U.S., she had come in looking for uh, healing for several different autoimmune diseases. She had panic attacks, chronic anxiety, uh, restlessness, sleeplessness, and the power of worship in that meeting was so strong. The Holy Spirit was so present that this woman had massive healing and nobody even prayed for her. At the end of the meeting, she came up front and one of our team prayed the last bit of trauma off of her life. And she wrote to me this week and told me that after four months, she has had not one, one panic attack, not one moment of anxiousness, not one sleepless night, not one manifestation of autoimmune dysfunction. That's our God. That's our King. As we gather together, we are in the presence of God. So if you are suffering from panic, anxiety, and fear, I am asking you right now to trust Jesus again, to just hold out your hand in submission to him while I pray for you, and to repeat after me in these words, Jesus, forgive me that I've made you too small. God, you are the one who created galaxies, and I choose to trust you right now. Lord, I break every agreement with anxiety and with fear, and I cancel the assignment of illness and distraction on my life. 
I command any spirit of infirmity or any spirit of fear to leave me and my family right now. And I declare the power of the blood of Jesus over me. I declare the blood of Jesus over my house and over my family and my property, over my health and over my business and over any ministry opportunities. I declare that I am free because the, the sun sets free is indeed free. And as we invite the worship team to come back up, we'll be joining together once more in a corporate prayer so that we can send the love light of Jesus across this planet to end this pandemic for the glory of his name.